Alright, this is going to be a quick demo of how we can use some existing uh, WASM hacking tools to hack this blockchain game that uses the Chainsafe uh, Gaming SDK and how we can get it to basically sign whatever messages we like and submit those to the Matic testnet. So the tool we're going to be using is called Cetus, um, which was developed by a user called Quokka. And Cetus is a browser plugin that basically lets you tweak with whatever kind of bosom might happen to be running at the time. And it lets you do that in a pretty user-friendly way. So this is a, a pretty easy kind of um, hack to, to execute. So if you want to follow along, um, the first step is to find the latest release of Cetus and install it in your browser of choice. Uh, so this is the game we'll be um, tampering with today. Uh, it's a small kind of racing game where you race around the track and if you get a high score, uh, the transaction is signed by a private key contained within the binary um, that will basically send this high score to a table which is stored as a contract on the Bannock testnet. Um, so if we start playing, it will ask us to connect a MetaMask and prove that we have a particular account, which is how we'll be identified in the high score table. And, um, yeah, so a quick look around the game, um, we have a timer at the top, and we can kind of drive around, and the timer counts down. And we need to reach the end of the race um, as quickly as possible, and whatever value on that timer, the small, uh, the, the greater the better, the remaining time will be our score at the end. So, let's go ahead and open up our um, dev tools. And if you've correctly installed the Cetus plugin, there should now be a uh, Cetus tool in the toolbar. Um, so let's go over like loosely how this works. There exists some really good videos by the creator, which are probably a better instruction for using the tool than, um, than this. But basically, um, you can search for a value that you believe is currently stored in the Wasm memory, um, and what data type it might have. And you can kind of uh, narrow down on what this thing is. So you can use bounds or um, subsequent equality operators to try and find the exact location in memory that holds a value of interest. And so the value of interest we're, uh, we're interested in is going to be the, the remaining time on the timer. Um, so let's chuck in this 5426 value here. Um, we'll assume it's an i32. So let's search for that in the memory. And there's kind of 49 results, um, so that doesn't help as much. So let's just resume the game and then pause it again. So now the timer has a slightly different value, so we can look this up again. And it will only search for uh, memory addresses that are already in the search results. So we're kind of narrowing down on what the correct address is. Um, so let's search again. Now we've narrowed it down to one result. Um, so probably this address is the address that's storing the value of the timer in memory. Uh, so let's bookmark this for later. Alright, and now uh, we know where this is, this tool has the ability to reach in and kind of tamper with it. Um, so here's our address and its current value expressed in hex. Um, what we can do is we can freeze the value. So that means whenever the Osm game tries to change this value, uh, it's just going to write it back to exactly what its current value is now. Uh, and essentially this means that the timer won't continue to count down. Um, so let's see what happens. So on the screen it appears like the timer is continuing to count down, but in fact um, behind the scenes the value actually is So we've completed the race, and let's kind of investigate what our final score actually was. Um, so the first thing you'll notice here is that some of the scores are 6,000, which is the initial start of the counter. Um, and these are pre previous times that I've kind of messed with the, the leaderboard. So essentially uh, completing the race in zero time. And if we want to check out the polygon contract, um, we'll see that 14 seconds ago um, a 
transaction was executed um, from the owner's public key. And if we were to dig into this transaction and dig into the data, um, we have this 14 db, um, which is the value that we locked into memory over here. Um, so it obviously took this value as we froze it right at the start of the race and ended up submitting this as a transaction. Um, so even though we didn't complete the game properly, we still end up with this value. Um, we could probably manipulate this value. We can actually set it rather than just freeze it. So we could actually make our score you know, faster than completing the race in zero seconds. And presumably there could be some uh, different exploits where you could um, overflow this value or or who knows, there's, there's a lot you could do. You basically have absolute control over any value in any memory address inside the running wasm. And I guess the, the overall message um, of this video is that anything that's running inside the user's browser, they have absolute control over. So even though normal players might have to abide by the rules of the game, um, players with specialized tooling can effectively, with not much difficulty, uh, alter any any parts of memory of the game. And if there is some signing logic embedded in the game, they can essentially convince this to sign any transaction that they like. Um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, yeah, download the Cetus tool um, and see if you can uh, hack some blockchain games for yourself. All right, thanks for listening.